How you doing there, folks? Little Shaul here, coming to you from FEMA region number three. Now, before I get to the crux of this biscuit, allow me once again to thank you all for the prayers sent unto the Father on my behalf during the recent turn of events that led to my four stents. <laughs> now, I, I agree that the enemy is out like a roaring lion seeking to devour those who watch upon the walls. But I would be remiss to dismiss another enemy. My left hand, what has for lo these many years delivered salt unto my mouth that would rival Lot's wife. Now that being said, unto the matter at hand. Scoffers, an analysis. Brothers and sisters, I have prayed long and hard about making this video, and as Laban would say, you know what, let me tell you what, Abba said, go for it. Now, how can you be so confident, little Shaul, you may ask? Well, there's only one place to go for that answer. Right there. Now, let me also point out that this video will certainly, certainly lead some to the conclusion that I am posting this video only to cultivate division amongst the brethren. Well, I have sought the counsel of the Almighty Father, and I have prayed his word to him. And when you do that, it does not return void. I have called unto him. And when we call unto him with a heart prepared to do his will, he promised to answer. And where is that promise? Right there. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. But you protest. Oh, little Shaul, Jeremiah, he was a prophet. Well, I don't care if Jeremiah was a bullfrog. If Abba had intended that passage to pertain to Jeremiah only, he would not have permitted Jeremiah to include it in that book. And if Abba intended that passage to pertain to all who seek his counsel, which it does, it means that he also intended this passage for us too. And boy, oh boy, do I love this one. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Uh, you want confidence? You want confidence? Read that. Read that, people. But, ooh, I hear the protests getting louder. Who do you think you are saying that you've been set over the nations and over the kingdoms? Well, I don't think I'm anything, because I know that I'm this, a joint heir with Yeshua. And how do I know? Because the Ruach himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of Elohim. And if children, then heirs, heirs of Elohim, and joint heirs with Hamashiach, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. People, if we are in fact joint heirs with Yeshua, Hamashiach, and we are told unequivocally that we are right there in that scripture. Are we not over everything on this earth? Come on now. What is being the sovereign of all worldly kingdoms compared to being joined heirs with the creator of everything? Man, oh man, if you say that you are a follower of Yeshua HaMashiach and you can't get your mind around the fact that we through him are more than conquerors, then you might as well be praying to Mort Saul or any other old Jewish comedian over 90 years old who hasn't died in the last six months. Now, I said all that to say this. I am confident, my brothers and my sisters, that what I am about to present unto you is the truth and that with all my being, I believe that the Ruach himself shall bear witness to it. Now, for those who will continue to believe that I am doing this simply to cause division, like Yeshua unto his detractors, I will not agree to disagree agreeably. Imagine if he'd have done that. All right, folks, this is who we'll be dealing with. So if there is anyone out there who will not be able to handle this, turn the video off right now, because I'm bringing it. Bringing what, little Shaul? Well, despite the fact that they both have Bibles, I will be bringing you the facts regarding the fact that with regard to the signs in the Shamaim spoken of by the Elohim, who they claim to follow, that these gentlemen have been derelict 
in a doctrine that I am certain that they have admonished others to adhere to. This doctrine right here. We find it in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto Elohim, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. <laughs> Look at the picture. Looks like they read that right along with us. Now, as we continue on, I would like for you to take note that not once in their little diatribes did they invoke 2 Timothy 2.15. Why did they not exhort we, we, who are watching in the way that Yeshua intended for us to watch, to show ourselves approved? Why? Because they had no credible basis to do so. They had no scriptural foundation to do so. To put it in layman's terms, they didn't have a leg to stand on. Ooh, I hear you. I hear you. Oh, how dare you, little Shaul. How dare you say these things against your brethren in Yeshua. How dare I? Ask me after the video. Now, what you are seeing here is a video posted way back in September of 2014. September 26, 164 days after the first blood moon of the 2014-2015 Tetrad, which was on April the 15th, and 12 days before the second, which occurred on October the 8th of 2014. Are you ready? Gird your loins. So, you brought it up. Let's just throw it out there. About what? Well, people, I've, um, I've had people over the course... It's probably been like a year now. Pastor Jack, when are you going to talk about the blood moons? I'm not going to. Oh, I wish you would. Not going to do it. Oh, why not? Why not? Don't believe in it. What? What did you say, Jack? What? Don't believe in it. That's what I thought you said. However, later in the video, you, you said this. By the way, I got up in the morning. I don't know about you. I got up in the morning and I looked at it. You got up to look at it. You got up to look at it, but... Don't believe in it. What? Don't believe in it. Well, then why would you even get up to look at it? Are you unaware of what Amir Sarfati is teaching? What do you say about this, Amir? I'm saying don't look for the moon. Don't look for the moon? But, but... I got up in the morning and I looked at it. Even though... Don't believe in it. Why did you go out and look, Jack? Why? Why did you get up out of bed to look at something you think is a joke? That's what I want to know. Why did Amir Sarfati not rebuke you like he has others for looking for the moon? What did you say, Amir, about them? I'm a little bit grieving in my spirit about the fact that people need signs and wonders and the Bible is not enough. Some people need some sort of a shot of excitement because the Bible is not enough. Well, well, Amir, it sure looks like your buddy Jack needed that shot of excitement because... I got up in the morning and I looked at it. Even though... Don't believe in it. Does this grieve your spirit, Amir? Does it bring to your mind the same passage of scripture that it brings to mine? Deuteronomy 25, verses 13 through 15. You shall not have in your bag differing weights, a heavy and a light. You shall not have in your house differing measures, a large and a small. You shall have a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure, that your days may be lengthened in the land which Yahweh your Elohim has given you. I'll leave it at that. Those who have ears will hear. Those who have sense will understand. But that's not all he said about going out to see the moon. He added this. I got up at about 2.30 in the morning. It was brown. Now, for those of you who may be thinking that I am editing this out of context to serve my own purpose, oh boy, could I have a field day with that one, couldn't I? Let's take a look at what he said. I got up at about 2.30 in the morning. It was brown. Take it easy. He is talking about the moon. Now, which moon he's talking about, I don't know. Because unless... He woke up at 2.30 in the morning in the central time zone of the Western Hemisphere. He wasn't seeing the first blood moon of April the 15th of the 2014-2015 blood moon tetrad. This man lives in Southern California. So, I don't know. Maybe he was on a trip. 
Maybe he was in the central time zone. He'll have to leave a comment after he sees this. Like, I'm sure he'll watch it. Uh, he'll have to, you know, let us know. Where was he? If he was in Southern California and he says he saw the blood moon of April the 15th, 2014 at 2.30 in the morning, something is very, very wrong. And why? Why would that be, little Shaul? Because at 2.30 in the morning, in the entirety of the state of California, on April the 15th, 2014, the moon would have looked like this. I got up at about 2.30 in the morning. It was brown. Did you ever hear of something called a blue moon, Jack? You know what that is? A blue moon is when there are two full moons in the same calendar month. And guess what? Let me tell you what. It's not really blue. And say, fellas, have you ever seen one of these? I bet you have. You know what they call that? They call that a red heifer. But you know, with regard to the two gentlemen that we're discussing, when considering how staunchly they defend their beliefs, I would hope and I would pray that in the event that they would have an opportunity to actually view one of these cows, that these men would in no way compromise their integrity and tell the truth by saying, hey, I saw a red heifer the other day. But you know what? It was brown. Floor's still yours, Jack. Go ahead. You would think that the whole world would have a chance to see the four blood moons. They don't. You have to live in certain areas to see them. Really? So, Jack, what you're saying is this. What you're saying is that if a person really wanted to see one of these moons but didn't live in one of these certain places, they would have had to make some sort of concerted effort to be at one of these certain places to see it, right? And if one is putting forth such an effort, you'd think that it would be important to them. But here's, here's the puzzler. You said that you saw one, and the one that you said you saw, you could not have been home for because it was invisible from where you live at the time that you said you saw it. So in order for you to have seen it, you would have had to make some sort of concerted effort. But that wouldn't make a lick of sense because... Don't believe in it. Oh, brothers and sisters, watchmen, watch ladies, watch children, and all of your watch beasts, understand that I do not make this video to rebuke or shame these guys. Oh no, I make it to show you that they simply don't know what they're talking about. Friends, think of the miraculous blessings that we have all been receiving through our watching and our looking up. They have literally forfeited these blessings by choosing to mock what we have been encouraged by. So this video is for you, my fellow watch folk, to say let them mock, let them it's their loss. The sad thing is that guys like this should know better. That's the sad thing. They seem to think that a sign cannot be a sign unless the sign is seen. Listen. Don't you think it should be visible to Israel if it's such a big deal? No. No, that's what you think. None of us are thinking that. And anyone who would think like that wouldn't even have the faith of Herod the Great. Oh, yeah? Well, how's that, little show? Well, read this. Read it. Now, after Yeshua was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where Hamashiach was to be born. What does that say? What does it say there, Jack? When Herod ran outside and saw the star, he became troubled and gathered... No, it says when Herod the king heard this, he didn't have to see the star. Why? Because he believed the wise men. He believed them because he knew that they knew that that was a sign. He believed it. Why? Because he knew. He knew what? He knew this. The Shamayim declare the glory of Elohim, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night reveals what? Knowledge. Knowledge, Jack. Knowledge. And on this subject, 
And that's all I'm talking about here, people. This man lacks knowledge. Oh, little Shaul, you'd better be able to back that up. <laughs> I don't have to back me up. He will. He'll back me up. Go ahead, Jack. From you didn't have one are. at all in Israel. Now, old Amir was kind of talking over Jack a little bit there, but here's what old Jack said. You didn't have one at all in Israel. Now, that's true with regards to the only blood moon that had occurred up to that point, which was the first one of 2014. But where their lack of knowledge comes to the fore was their lack of fortitude in taking the time to acquire the knowledge about whether any of the subsequent blood moons would be visible in Israel. And we, who have been looking up, certainly know the answer to that. Do we not? Thank you, Scotty. So you see, my friends, when it came down to trying, just trying to gain any knowledge at all on the subject, they weren't even willing to pull up a chart, a chart that would have at least quelled a portion of their mockery. And you know, they, they just keep saying the same thing over and over again. Well, what is it, Jack? What is it? It just keeps saying over and over again. If something doesn't happen on that day, when it doesn't happen, if nothing happens. Wake up, Jack. Come on, wake up. Wake up, Jack. Oh, for goodness sakes. When nothing happens, when nothing happens, oh, I am simply agog. Agog by the skill that they apply in totally getting all of this completely backwards. That has nothing to do... Oh. Now, granted, the Star of Bethlehem was not a total lunar eclipse. But do they actually think that the Magi thought that something was quote-unquote supposed to happen the very moment they saw the star? Oh, come on, Jack. I know you're not finished. I know you have more to tell us. The blood moons I knew it. are not indicative of cataclysmic or prophetic signs. If they were, God would have called you out. God would have said, watch for four moons. Okay. Our God's that specific. Oh, oh, our God is that specific. And on hearing a statement like that, we cannot help and or resist a lighting off to the greatest prophetic discourse in all of Kodesh Rit. The Olivet Discourse. We're not going to go through the entire discourse, my brothers and sisters, but just enough to show Pastor Jack just how specific our God is. Can be. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Now, first of all, we have to realize that when they say sign of your coming, they couldn't possibly be talking about Nechetef. Harpazo, this is Matthew 24. Yeshua had not yet even alluded to his preparation of the Father's house for them, which he spoke of during the time of his Last Supper with the Twelve. It is not anywhere near possible to think that these twelve men had even an inkling of such a concept as Netkata Farpazo. I, I mean, they saw Yeshua calm a raging storm by raising a finger. And still they said, who is this guy? So, so they're going to understand Netketef Harpazo? If these guys had heard the words Netketef Harpazo, they probably would have thought it was some Jewish guy with an Italian father. So in this discourse, when it speaks of sign of his coming, it simply has to be the actual second coming of Yeshua. You know, when he literally lands on the exact mountain where this discourse actually is taking place. Now let's see how specific Yeshua is about the sign of his coming. And notice it says sign, singular. <laughs> Very interesting, that. Now we're going to go straight for the thing that Yeshua mentioned in this discourse that really seems to be Jack and Amir's favorite. Wars and rumors of war. <laughs> now little Shaul, you ask, how is this their favorite? Well, I say in response, if you must ask, then you certainly don't listen to their updates. And I mean both of their most recent updates. That's all they talk about. It's over 50% of their updates. Wars and rumors of war. That, that's, you know, that's really all they talk about. Now remember what Jack said. What was that again you told us, Jack? The blood moons are not indicative of cataclysmic or prophetic signs. 
If they were, God would have called you out. God would have said, watch for four moons. Exactly. Our God's that specific. What? Our God's that specific. Aha. Uh -huh. So then I guess we can go deeper. Go deeper into the discourse and see how specific, okay? Let's do that. Let's see exactly which nations that Yeshua tells us are involved in these wars and rumors of same. <laughs> well, looky there. It, it kind of it kind of doesn't, does it? Kind of don't get specific there. Uh, it kind of kind of stops right there, don't it? And yet these guys can go on and on and on and on and on and on and on about it. <laughs> and we're looking for stuff. We're looking for stuff to get excited about. How did you put it, Amir? Some people need some sort of a shot of excitement because the Bible is not enough. Well, not like getting all hopped up on wars and rumors of war, right, Jack? Kim Jong-un has the power right now to destabilize, if not obliterate or render the Seventh Fleet inoperable by launching an EMP bomb. He can now strike San Diego, Los Angeles, Seattle, this is now a real reality. This is not scare tactics. Somebody made a comment uh, the last time I did this, and they said scaremongering. This person who said that it's an obvious uh, idiot. Aha, uh -huh. so let me get this straight, Jack. Let me see if I'm following you correctly. You believe that anyone who would tell us not to get all worked up over North Korea, uh, because as we well know, these things can certainly separate us from the love of Elohim, right? Because Yeshua specifically named North Korea as one of the nations, right? Anyone who would tell us not to overreact concerning these wars and rumors of wars and nations rising against nations, well, they would be what? Obvious, uh, idiot. Of course. Anyone who could say not to be overly concerned about these dangers, the dangers in the world, all over the world, would have to be, as you say, an obvious idiot. Well, Jack, how's about we go back to Matthew 24, verse 6, and confirm that, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. See that you are not troubled. Who's warning you against scaremongering here, Jack? An obvious idiot? And where is the specificity of your God in these verses, Jack? You say that there is no sign credibility in a series of total lunar eclipses falling on the first and last of Elohim's Moedim for two consecutive years, something that takes place in the Shamayim created by Elohim, and one that cannot be corrupted or manipulated by people in any way, shape, or form, yet you warn people to watch and worry over something that Yeshua commanded we not be troubled by. You strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. You fret over a rumor and turn your back on a miracle. And then concerning September 23rd, all the hysteria that the world is going to end or the rapture is going to happen on September 23rd. But if you say the rapture is going to happen on September 23rd, now I know it's not going to happen on the 23rd. Who's the date setter now, Pastor? How do you dare rail against those who you say set a date when you give yourself the authority to nullify one? You, Amir Sarfati, and a myriad of others continue to trot out no man knows the day or the hour. Then turn around and produce your own private interpretation of that scripture, which you all will be held accountable for. Brothers and sisters, there is something seriously wrong here. And I really believe that many, many out there have to start assessing how much longer they should continue to listen to these dudes. Like I said, I'm not saying anything against their salvation or anything like that. I'm just saying that they're just too caught up with looking down. Looking down, because they're certainly not looking up. Oh no, little Shaul. Oh no. Listen to what Amir said back in 2014. I'm saying don't look for the moon. Don't look for the sun or the stars. Look up for your Redeemer is drawing near. I, I, I don't see why we need extra, uh, extra things to look at when all the things that we need to um, are all here. Did you actually hear 
what he told those poor folks out there in that audience, did you? He told them to do the opposite of, well, look at Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 9, number 9, number 9. Now when he had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud took them out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? There was a reason they asked that question, people. Yeshua told them that there would be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. That's Luke 21, 25. And when they begin to happen, then look up, not just gaze up. Big, big difference here for your redemption will be drawing nigh. You see, the command was not to just stand there and gaze up. The command to look up was when the signs begin to happen. Sarfati basically told these people to do what the men in the white apparel told them not to do. Just standing and gazing is not the command. But, but maybe that's what these guys want. Maybe they just want their followers to just stand and gaze. They say, look up, but make sure you don't see that sun or that moon or those stars. Do you see that is absurd? Absolutely absurd. Uh, you talk about sowing confusion? Sarfati literally removed Yeshua's words from the verse. He actually told those people not to look at the sun or at the moon or at the stars where Yeshua said there would be signs. I'm saying don't look for the moon. Don't look for the sun or the stars. This is bad. This is very, very bad. But you say, oh, little Shaul, this was three years ago. He said that way back in September of 2014. Well, how about we listen to what he said in September of 2017? Ladies and gentlemen, seeing these signs and, and get rid of all your attention on the moon and the stars and, and all of that. Christians are so divided today over non-issues. Um, and then they're not ready and they're not, they're not prepared. Not ready for what? What are you talking about? And he says, these signs that we're seeing. What signs is he talking about? We know that he's not talking about the Revelation 12 sign because he makes no bones about telling everyone that it's not valid. So he must be talking about what they're always talking about. Wars and rumors of war. A topic, as we have shown you unequivocally in the scriptures, is something that we as followers of Yeshua HaMashiach, need not even bother about. But these guys, they're obsessed. Watch their stuff. It's, it's all. It's all they talk about. And, and saying, saying some of the screwiest things I've ever heard. What are you talking about, little Shaul? Well, if you watched Pastor Jack's latest report or whatever it is, you might have heard this. I am planning on imminent war to break out against Israel any time now. What? I understood the part about war breaking out in Israel, but what was that first part again? I am planning on imminent war to break out against Israel any time now. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> oh, little show. Uh, maybe he made a mistake. Maybe he meant to say he's expecting war to break out at any time in Israel. I don't care. I don't care if he made a mistake. He didn't come on here and correct it. He didn't come on and say, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say I'm planning on it. I meant to say that, that, that I'm expecting it. He didn't. He didn't. That's what he said. And it's weird. I, I'm done. I'm done with these fellas. They're just, they're just freaking me out now. They're not looking up. They're looking down. They're mocking the very gifts that our Elohim is giving to us to keep our heads up, to keep us looking up. And, and get rid of all your attention on the moon and the stars and, and all of that. Do you hear this? It's, it's, it's like he has actual contempt for the heavens. And there's no doubt how they feel about us. They think we're a bunch of morons. Oh, no, no, they say. The book of Joel talks about the day when the moon will be turned to blood. And that we apparently all talk like Count Dracula. 
Oh, my brothers and my sisters, watchmen, watch, ladies, watch, children, and all our watch beasts. We are so close. We are so close to seeing our bridegroom. If these people would rather look down rather than up, there's nothing that we're going to be able to do about it. But what we can do is see, without a shadow of a doubt, that Bible prophecy is without equivocation, 100% accurate, 100% of the time. And no one on this earth proves this more than the scoffers. Here's the danger, here's the danger. If nothing happens, and then now you have these 50 days of war that just took place, that's it. That's a fulfillment. Yeah, but we had it in 2011 also. Well, then but the point is this is, uh, oh, now you have to grasp at, to fulfill it. When, but you know, this is going on in, in the Middle East. When is something not going on in the Middle East? <laughs>